What is up? We don't know Sports Nation. Now is the time that we ask fans all across the world to take off the filter, rip off the Band-Aid, and tell everyone exactly what is on their mind. Ladies and gentlemen, it is time for No Filter. Ladies and gentlemen, we are back with our No Filter segment. And you know what? We've had a, a string of some good guests. We haven't done the No Filter segment, it seems like, in over a month. Does that, does that sound about right? Yeah, we keep focusing on the actual ball players, you know, and now we're getting some uh, fanatics on the show. I, I guess we're desperate for guests, right? Yeah. Is that what this yeah, is? Yeah, that's what so, we're so desperate for. We today. scraped the bottom of the barrel and we pulled back Appreciate friend that. of the show, Bo Payne. And then we also, he's representing Red Sox Nation. And then we went out and found a, a Yankee, Anthony from, Buffalo. Anthony from Buffalo, New York, wearing his Yankees right. cap. So, gentlemen, welcome to the show. How y'all doing? Doing good, doing good, guys. Glad to be back on. Glad to see you, Anthony. What's going on? Appreciate that, man. Now, it's a pleasure to be on the show for the first time. You know, I'm excited to talk <clears> baseball. <throat> love sports. Love the Yankees. Love the, love the rivalry, obviously. So, excited to be here. All right, yeah, we're, we're glad to have you guys. And, you know, if you don't suck, Anthony, we'll bring you back on. That's kind of what happened with Bo. He didn't <sighs> suck of, too bad. A lot of pressure right off the get go. <laughs> a lot of pressure. I uh, love it. I love pressure. Hey, you're, you're a New Yorker, man. You can you can handle it. <laughs> like, I am like Jeter under pressure. You know what I mean, I always, always perform All right. my class. All right. So All right. let's let's start with the standings. Uh, who's in first place? Neither one of these guys. Neither one of these guys. Well, who's in second, at least? I can tell you who ain't in first either is uh, the Cincinnati Reds, Chad. So. Uh, well, you know what? I'm going to mute your mic after that out there. You know, we got to control control ourselves here. We're not here to talk right, about the, right. uh, the I, dog I'm, shit I'm, NL Central. I'm just kidding. I am surprised the Cubs somehow are in first place without any pitching. But, you know, it is what it is. But uh, all right. fade. So, the Tampa Bay Rays – 36 and 22 best record in the al we've said it before the uh, season started i felt like they lost a lot you know they got rid of snell they got rid of what uh was it glass no uh, glass now still there um, he's still uh, there once he's nuts it went to the padres what's his nuts um God. Well, they got rid of blake snell. why are we so bad at this i don't know anyways they lost a lot of talent and i was like at some point it's got to come back and bite because they're not spending money but it's like they're kind of like the oakland a's and they keep figuring ways out to win in the regular season. They've had more success in the postseason than A's have. Here they are, 36-22, best record in the AL. Second, <clears throat> second to Red Sox, Bowen, and uh, Anthony, your Yanks are kind of recovering. They're four and a half back. Yeah, yeah, slightly, slightly. So let, let's kick over to uh, Bo. We'll start with you. So what's right. your thoughts on the early season here for the Red Sox and and how are you feeling about the division overall? I think the division is the best division in baseball, AL Beast. Um, when you look at it, you look at the NL West is tough, but you got to throw in the Blue Jays with us. I think they're 30 and 25 loaded with talent. Um, I think you're in your out, man. Uh, you got to go through the AL East. Um, I'm, pl- I'm pleasantly surprised, man, to tell you the truth. I-, I was on the show, what, a few months ago before the season started. And you all asked me over under 84. And I said, under, uh, we're basically playing with a patchwork, uh, rotation, we got a bunch of number three and four guys. We got a patchwork, bunch of minor league outfielders. Um, you know, our pen is is decent at best. We got Ottavino from y'all, who's been who's been okay. Um, you know, Barnes has been good, but uh, we've got basically four or five guys that'll start next year for us in the field, and we're doing well. So I'm pleased, man. You know, we just dropped three out of four to Houston, but Houston's a good ball club. So, Dude, yeah, J- I'm, JD's I'm all right. turned it back up, baby. Look at JD. JD Rafi. You know, Xander, we, we got some, we got some uh, foundation, but you know, uh, Hunter Pence or Hunter Pence, uh, <laughs> Hunter Renfro. <laughs> yeah. We'll take, I'll take Pence over Renfro. Uh, <laughs> Kiki Hernandez, you know, uh, you know, Darwin, these, these role players are just what they are as role players. Uh, we got studs on the farm. Uh, a few guys, Duran, Cassis, a uh, few guys in the uh, Mookie trade that we're going to bring up next year. So our rebuild is not done until opening day 22. And I've maintained that for about two or three years. I'm on and blew my trust completely. So, so they started out hot. Do you feel like they have what it takes to at least <laughs> hold on to a wild card? Or do you think they even have a shot at the division? Uh, I'm, I've maintained this position the whole time since day one wild card. Um, and I'm not going to, you know, I love talking shit on the Yanks, man. And we'll get into it. And I'm sure Anthony will throw some back at me, but uh, the Rays are playing out of their mind, dude. I don't get it. I mean, their pitching is insane. And uh, that's how you win in baseball is pitching. And the Sox are, you know, basically got a bunch of three and fours. Um, 
So wild card. I don't think we're going to win the division. Uh, I don't expect it. It would be something crazy. You know, Atlanta Braves circa 1991, maybe something like that. But the Yanks are too talented once they get healthy. And uh, Atlanta's – or Atlanta. Um, Tampa Bay's just legit. So wild card, baby. Next year, though, we're, we're coming after it. Okay. At least so crowns and World Series titles. So the Rays are the, the enigma. We can't figure things out. So he's saying the Red Sox might be a little bit ahead of schedule because he's really banking on next year. But so far, they've been all right. So let's swing over to Anthony. The Yankees, of all teams in baseball outside of the Dodgers, probably have the highest like potential. Everybody thinks they're going to be in the in highest our, expectations. Yeah, the expectations are through the roof. So how do you feel like it's gone so far? Um, definitely not up to my expectation. You know what I mean? I, I think that coming into the season, uh, you know, especially coming after the whole COVID season and having a full off season to kind of get back at it. I thought that the Yankees would be coming in healthy and my, my problem, see, here's my problem with the Yankees. I love my Yankees to death and it's never an issue of talent with the, with the exception of maybe two seasons in the last 20 or so seasons. It's never been an issue of talent. It's an issue of being hurt and, and and I heard Aaron Judge was overtraining that was part of the reason that he was hurt John Carlos Stanton can't seem to stay on the field that aggravates me and for that reason we're not winning ball games I mean you have Corey Kluber toss a no hitter and a, a dominant no hitter nonetheless and th- and then he's out and the next game comes out three innings and then he has a, a he has he's out for what eight weeks I believe I mean so for me that's disappointing I understand injuries are a part of the game but I just I want to see it click they have the talent. It's there. Yeah, I mean, Garrett Cole, one of the best pitchers in the entire major leagues. Corey Kluber showed hints that he was the old Corey Kluber that won a Cy Young. Yes. And, I mean, Domingo Herman, he can be out there. Sure. I mean, Luis Severino, whenever he comes back, we don't know. He could return to the ace form that he once was. That's a nasty one through four, potentially, if they're healthy. And Garrett Cole is the only one that I see with con- con- consistency with going, you know, Okay, so and, and let me cut you off real quick. So let me just ask you this. So we've seen the injury bug and everything that's happening there. How yeah. long is it going to take the Yankees to gel then? Like, what's it going to take? When's that going to finally happen? I don't know, man. I, I, feel, I feel part of it is – part of it's luck, really. Or part of it maybe is just coaching staff. I don't know. It could be one of the two. It's just – they have, like I said, they have the talent, maybe not the right players though. Maybe not the right players that are meant to be in pinstripes. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> I mean, I've loved the, some of the production I've seen when Aaron judge is on the field. I mean, and he's on, he's been on the field for most of the season. He's performed. Glover Torres is starting to come on to play. You know what I mean? That's that, that's signs that give me optimism. Clint Frazier, you know what I mean? His late game heroics the other day. It's just, they have the potential to, I, I don't want to say they're going to win the division, because I don't want to be unrealistic. I don't know how hurt people are going to be and how much it's going to affect us for the rest of the season. Okay, so give us, a, believe, give us an over-under on wins then. I'd say 92. Ooh. Okay. So that, 92. That, that could win the division. Uh, I, I, yeah, it could. It's going to be tough. I, and I've got to give it to him. He said that the AL East uh, is by far the, the toughest division in the major leagues, and I fully agree with that. If it's not that, then it's the NL West. But I honestly believe that with the exception of the Baltimore Orioles, the AL East is just nasty. You can get beat by them through pitching and through hitting. So, I mean, it's exciting to see the competitiveness within our division, whether it's the Sox. And like he said, I don't understand how the Rays are doing it. Every single year, they just find a way to pitch and hit the ball. Like, they just play pure baseball. But, it's actually but kinda... at, at 92, you're pretty much locked in at least to a wild card. So, you're, right. you're anticipating yeah. October baseball in New York. I, I just – I don't think that – it's in based on what I've seen from the Yankees my entire life. And I'm 27 years old. I've watched Yankees since I was four years old from what I've seen my entire life. They've been successful and they played in October. So I'm not used to seeing it. So if they don't get there to me, that's a disappointment with the amount of money that you're paying people and the amount of talent that's there. It's just not acceptable. And I mean, at that point, it's going to raise some questions in the front office about, you know, should Aaron Boone be coming back? It's just going to be a lot of questions. I mean, it's, it's a little bit of dysfunction right now and I'm not a big fan of it. I'm not a big fan of it. So before we move on to the next question, uh, you're right there in Buffalo. So if you did yeah. any scouting, have you watched the Blue Jays yet? So uh, I would love to go to a Blue Jays game. However, tickets are extremely ridiculous. I'm mm. talking the Yankees. The Yankees Blue Jays game was, I think, the first tickets being sold was sold at 300 hours a piece. Good lord. Um, and don't get me wrong. I mean, I would love to go see the Yankees play in my my backyard by no you know by any mean, but. I can go to New York and they have tickets in the fourth deck for 11 bucks. Right. I mean, to me, it just, so, but I do know, I can tell you guys this actually real quick too. A lot of fans here in Buffalo are really enjoying the blue Jays being here. And it's actually incredible to see what Salem's field has done to make the field accessible for the blue Jays, the media and the fans, because, you know, 
Uh, COVID hit this region very tough. And so for fans to be there and seeing live sports, professional sports, it's really, it's really exciting. And I know it's, it's doing some good things for the city of Buffalo. So is it the AAA affiliate stadium? Is that where they're playing? Yep. The uh, Buffalo Bisons. Yep. Okay. Actually, I, I love going to Bison's games. They're, it's where the natural was. The natural was filmed. Robert Ripper. Yeah. yeah. Okay. And hey, I've seen, oh, I've seen some players look at play Bo there. dropping knowledge on everybody. I've Legendary. actually seen, uh, I've seen some yeah. players play there. I saw Vlad Jr. play there before he got to the pro. Nice. So that was pretty cool. Yep. It's a great sports town. Legit. Yeah. Legit sports town. Absolutely. A drink of town with a sports problem, nonetheless. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey, I'll, ask both, I'll ask both of you guys this. So the MLB always flirts about expansion. We know all the drama that was going on with the A's so far this year. Any chance Buffalo ever gets a big squad, or are they just stuck in AAA limbo forever? You know, it's, it's funny because I actually just read something earlier about that. Um, there are rumors that, based on how Buffalo has handled the Blue Jays coming here, that it – gives them a glimpse that hey buffalo might really be a town that we could really sell baseball i mean it's i mean you'd already get people coming in here to see the yankees whatever i'm sure that you get people coming in just to see the bisons games it would be really incredible however i'm not sure that we're the size of a market that major league is going to be looking for i think they're going to be looking more towards las vegas that would be my and bet i think the A's less. realignment's a big problem it's got yeah. to stay out huge less. yep huge yep. problem it'd be exciting but it's it's definitely a long shot you know what i mean but it would definitely be exciting all right let's swing it back over to bo so since we got a yankees and a red sox fan here let me just ask like bo is your fandom you know throughout the time rooting for the red sox <laughs> what, what's the biggest knife in the heart you've gotten from the yankees like what's the one moment that stands out to you where you like oh, i hate those rat bastards like i, I um, mean obviously it's born into you but what else okay so anthony i respect the fact that you're 27 um and you uh <laughs> no you don't <laughs> well no i, I do <laughs> I'm saying, no, no, I said with all due respect with all due respect let me juice this up a little bit i don't hey i got a lot of my best friend out here is from buffalo uh to tell you, a huge yankees fan and we go don't, at don't it. go bills <laughs> yeah i mean he's a, you know i'm past all, all all the different stuff um before you were even born hey then the yankees were sticking knives in my throat or, or in my heart my father's heart my grandfather's heart and on and on and on. Mm -hmm. So I got to say my first taste of heartbreak was 78 with Bucky F and Dent. When he, <laughs> when he took Torres deep in game 163 of the one game playoff. Fast forward, I, this ain't the Yanks in 86, but it's the, it's the F and Mets who just crushed me. I was 12 years old in 86. Game, you know, game six, um, I met Billy Buck out here when he was a hitting instructor for uh, the short day uh, Cubbies team out here. He was a real nice guy before he passed away. Rest in peace. Um, but he said the, the Red Sox fans and the Boston fans destroyed his life. Absolutely destroyed him. And uh, so that was heartbreak for me. I didn't go to school for about five days. I, I hold up in my room and I cried and I, I pleaded to God, why the hell, you know, this and that, this and that. And then let's fast forward to 2003 and um. I was doing I was doing okay in my uh, in my sobriety and I was uh, I was moving along you know and I, I'm making light of it because of the way my life is today it's fantastic. Um, oh my god! Five two. I want to say bottom of the seventh. That idiot Grady Little comes out. Uh, <laughs> Should have taken the ball from Pedro because Pedro's velocity in the first few innings was 97 98. He was mowing guys down. Uh, I think you got Godzilla on deck, Matsui and, and Jeter and all the boys coming up. And uh, and we had you, man, 5-2, bottom of seven or bottom of eight. I can't remember. So, anyways, they leave uh, uh, Martinez, convinces Grady Little, so, you know, get the hell out of here. I'm Pedro Martinez. I'm the greatest ever. Get on out of here. And uh, I think he gave up three runs that inning. Scores tied five. We yank him. Me and my girlfriend at the time book it down to another bar while they're doing a pitch and change because I'm like, I'm superstitious. I'm like, this this is fucked up shit. We, we can't stay here because the Sox are going to lose. So we got to go watch this at another place. And I'd already started drinking again because I the, the stress was just insane. And we get there and it's the bottom of the ninth, bottom of 10th, bottom of 11th. There's 200 people in this bar all crowded around this TV. And, and this is 2003. So there's not giant big screens everywhere like there are today. And Wakefield just flutters a little knuckler in the middle of the middle of the plate and Boone hits it and pa. Ding. I flips, put my head down like that, and I just I walked out of the bar, and I just had to be by myself. And everyone's screaming and yelling, and half the bar was you know socks, half the bar was Yankees, and 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 it was devastating. It was absolutely devastating because and I was trying to tell Anthony this. 
you all had just crushed us for years and years and years. And we're not like the Cubbies to where we're the lovable losers and we never even get close to getting there. Like you guys have ripped our heart out in game seven, year after year after year in these most disgusting ways possible. And so as Red Sox fans, we, we finally were like, oh my God, we're going to do it. Finally, finally, thank you, God. And then the Yankees <laughs> rip our heart out, boom. And so the next year, um, when we didn't get Alex Rodriguez in the 25th hour and we got Schilling instead when he went to New York, um, I'm fr- well, I played high school baseball in Miami. I was drafted by the Marlins. I don't know if these guys told you, so I played with a lot of guys and, and I've known Alex a little bit from way back in the year. And, and he's, uh, nah, he's not, not one of my favorite people, <laughs> but uh, to say the least, um, even to this day, I don't know. He's not a bosom buddy, but, um, I was so glad when we got Schilling and then the fight with Veritech and uh, A-Rod. And that's what turned our whole season around in 04. And I hate to say this to you, my man, but from 04 to 21, the rest is history. Anthony, go ahead and, and give us uh, <laughs> wow. your pain points and uh, any rebuttal you have. I'd be more than happy to. Thank you. So, you know, uh, <sighs> The 03 thing, I understand that because, you know, you guys, like you just stated, the most dagger moment I've ever had from a Red Sox game is definitely the whole entire series of 2004's AL championship blowing a 3 nothing lead with Mariano Rivera coming in in the ninth inning and uh, losing in game seven to allow the Red Sox to then go on and win the World Series and break the entire curse that not that allowed their franchise to never win a World Series. And now here they are winning again. And I don't like that at all. So, I mean, 04, just <laughs> nah. Like, I wish I could delete that. You know what I mean? But it's just a dagger. But you know what? The uh, I got to give a little bit of respect to, to the Red Sox here because what they what they were able to do, I mean, that, that takes a lot of resilience. It just – you don't see you don't see teams or people that just have that character that it don't matter how many games they're down, we're just gonna fight back until you know we win one game at a time. You just don't see that anymore. So I gotta give the Sox some respect, but Appreciate I mean, that. like he just said, year after year after year, we're winning game sevens, we're going, we're winning the AL East. You know, it just we just ran we ran shit for a long time, and now here the Sox are. It's their turn. I gotta be honest. You know what I mean? And they're they're playing consistent. I got to be honest, too. I got my feelings about Alex Cora. I might get into that at some point, too, the fact <laughs> that he's a manager. But but all said and done, you know, the Sox are playing good baseball. And shit, looks uh, looks tough for the Yankees, man. So he might have a fair point there to say that the uh, Sox have had uh, from 04 to now. And I don't like that one bit. So, Anthony, yes. while you're talking about it, give us your most hated Sox player of all time. That's where I was going to go. Ooh. Ooh. I mean, so like, I love Big Poppy. I'll give you that, yeah. but oh, no Mount Rushmore either. We just need uh, more. You know who? It's like if it, 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 it's either it's I got to give you one or two. It's either Jonathan Papelbon just because of how he stared down the, the fucking mound <laughs> with the whole. Yeah, you know I mean, like nah, like I didn't like I didn't like Papelbon one bit. I was gonna <laughs> I was gonna say Eucalyptus, but he eventually played for the Yankees, so I can't. But. <sighs> Oh, I think it's Papel Bond, man. I felt Papa, that. Yeah. Yeah, I felt Bond, that. Papel Bond can, yeah, no offense. You're not alone, that. though, man. Pap pissed a lot of people yeah, off. Yeah, that's good. <laughs> All right, so, uh, Bo, how about yeah. you? I mean, we already discussed our uh, disdain right. for A-Rod that's mutual here. So, who, who's your most uh, hated Yankee of all time? Oh, God. Okay, so this is going to upset you, Anthony. Oh, <laughs> this is not. Don't say it. Don't say it. I'm going <laughs> to say it. I'm gonna say it. I can, I'm gonna say it. Number two. Oh, you're I, I such a I knew, no, yeah. bro. Like no. I, I'm. I talk, look. 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 Let me. Let, 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 idol, let me preface man. this. That's my let idol, bro. This. Like you <laughs> got just like him, man. <laughs> check it out. Check it out. Check it out. Let me get a twenty second here. Go ahead. You got <laughs> Derek Jeter, man. Derek Jeter. Okay. Mad respect. First ballot Hall of Famer. Thirty four hundred hits. I mean, no doubt. Okay. Um. Look, I'm a Nomar guy. I think in their primes, they were pretty close to each other. I think Nomar might even had a little bit more of a prime. That's debatable, whatever. Alex was the best shortstop in, in his day. But that, that's not what we're talking about. I don't hate Derek as a person. He embodies everything that I can't stand about New York. And look, 
Class? This goes back. <laughs> class? Touche, touche, touche. Uh, uh, yeah, real class. Uh, what are you talking about? Like the parting gifts he gives all his broads in, in Manhattan. He did it right. He's like, I'm gonna he bang you for three Sinatra. weeks. And, he did it so, his way. <laughs> sign a baseball and say, hit the road, girl. He, I think Joe's he, jealous. And, and he's he jealous would, of his all-star team. That's he what would he sign that all he's got, every, he's oh, got a Derek. starting nine. It's not bad. I guess you know what. It's, I guess. it's impressive. It's impressive. Look, look, let me let me finish here and I'll let Go you ahead. jump in. He's a hell of a player and he's a first battle Hall of Fame guy. He just he was around when you guys were killing us, man. When you guys were killing us in the late 90s with Pettit and Jorge and Jeter. He's he's you know, he's part of that crew. He he's he's almost untouchable. And I know he's the king of New York. And, uh, you know, like you yes. said, you respect Poppy. It's kind of like that respect, but hatred for the guy at the same time. Because, yeah, because, he, kicked because he killed yeah. us, man. He just <laughs> killed yeah. us. He fucking Hell killed yeah. us. Hell so, yeah. so it's not like I got anything personal against him. I don't think he was – I mean, he's a great ball player. He's Mr. Yeah. Yankee. He's got five – what, five rings, I think. So yeah, I'm not rings. knocking yeah. him per se, man. He just tore my guts out. He's bro. the face so. of the pain, right? He's the face of the pain, okay. you know. He just, and, you know, uh, and the best part about that face of the pain is it's just the most stern look on his face. You know, you don't I, see him excited. You don't show emotion. That's why I love I sure as hell. You know what? He signed that autograph ball while he was in his butt. You know, he, he did stuff in his boxers, <laughs> watching his own highlights, saying, yeah, Jeets, that's what I want to strive to be when I wake up when I'm 35. <laughs> you know what I mean? Uh, but I understand. Watching, you made a fair point, though. I understand. He's watching Billy Miller single up the middle off Big Mo, the bottom of the ninth, tied up. I think he's still, he's like me, watching his 3,000th hit yeah. at like 1 in the morning. Yeah, I don't he's know. getting fired up. You know, is he still with the Marlins? Is he still running that show, or is he... Hey, serious know, question. Everyone was, everyone was saying he was in a conspiracy with the Yankees for giving Stanton with the Stanton he's deal. Yeah, looking like a genius. Got we don't have to pay him all that money. He could be hurt on their team. You know what I mean? Hey, so, can like, I go back to that real quick? Bit. What you guys were saying and being an ex ball player uh, about Judge and Stanton, those guys are too big, bro. Baseball, yeah. you, you know need what? to be. You, you need yeah. to have more elasticity. I mean, I mean, those guys. You said it, Anthony. When they're on the field, they're Not legit. Jeopardy. Jeopardy, but it's man. when they're on the field. And those guys are so so tightly tuned athletes that they can pop a hammy like that. Or, you know, they're just giant. And and you need and, and Kluber. That's the reason why the Yanks are really the only one in on them in the offseason because of the arm problems. You know, I mean, it, I, I hate to say it. And Kluber's a stud, dude. That guy's stoic. He's got oh, that, nasty that no shit. hitter was, was ridiculous. You know, yeah, it was, was ridiculous. Filthy. I think he's, I didn't filthy. even think he even threw 100 pitches that game. You know, it's crazy. But, I had a feeling in the third inning he was going to toss one. I swear to God. Yeah, he's I'm, legit. I, I just, I, that's yeah. why I turned the game off. I'm like, but he's got, he's you. got arm issues, man. And, and Stan and Judge are too big to play the game, I think. And that's why they're, they're hurt all the time, you know. That's my all opinion. Right. On all right. We, we could, I, I know we could talk all night because we all love baseball in here and you guys go mm. back and forth is fun, but you know, we're going to wrap up, but we want to give somebody an opportunity to kind of hit a walk off here. And we're going to give you some uh, uninterrupted, unbridled, you know, microphone time where you can get anything off your chest you want, but we're going to see who gets that opportunity. So we got a couple of trivia questions for you guys and they're, and they're easy. So who, uh, who wants to go first? Uh, let me take this. Okay, so this, this is Red Sox trivia. So the, the question is, I, I believe we decided, <laughs> can you name the top three home run hitters of all time for the Boston Red Sox? Ted Williams, Jimmy Fox, and Big Poppy. All right, we're not going to tell you if you're right or wrong. So going over to Anthony, your question is, can you name the top three hit leaders in Yankee history? Okay, so you got Derek Jeter, Lou Gehrig, and three man. I know this too. It ain't the babe. Mm. Ten seconds. Uh Joe DiMaggio. All right, you guys both went two out of three. Well, th that's a trick question because some of these guys, like Manny, hit more bombs than Teddy Williams. Uh -oh. It's for but the Red Manny Sox. Manny played with the Indians yeah. as well. You know what I and, mean? And so. yeah, it was, it was for the Red Sox. So Fox, the Red Fox Sox. is not in the top three. Okay, well, we'll go Poppy, Ted Williams, and uh, Carl Yastrzemski. All right, we'll, we'll give Anthony one more chance. You want to get the – you got Jeter right. You got um, uh, Garrick right. Who's yeah, the, third? the third? The third is, is – can't <clears> – <throat> This is hurting him. It is too, because like I know it, dude. Like I know it. 
thought you said this was a Yankees fan. Yeah. Oh, get the hell out of here. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm from Buffalo. I drink enough beer to forget shit. So, yeah. Um, <laughs> honestly, man, y'all got me stumped. I'm not gonna guess. It's, it's wrong, the guy you said it. It's the guy you said it wasn't. Yeah, the guy you See? talked yourself out of saying. Number See, three. and I knew it. See, that's why I was saying I knew it. I'm a. Don't ever listen to myself again. Uh, right, so we got. We, we still got to do a tiebreaker. Well, yeah, we'll go to the tiebreaker. So, um, so we'll start. Anthony, who <clears throat> is the highest OPS player for the Yankees this year so far? The highest OPS player. Yep. Hmm. For a minute there, I think it was Higgy, but I want to say it's got to be Aaron Judge, right? All right, let's swing over. Bo, who's the highest OPS guy for the Red Sox this year? Jesus, it's either it's either Xander or Martinez or Devers. It's not Devers. Um, Did you see pick three? <laughs> he's, he's right <laughs> if we get him pick three. Uh, <laughs> yeah, let's go. Uh, let's go bogey. Ah, we got a winner. It's going to be Anthony. Because oh, it's JD. It's uh, JD. So it was JD, Anthony, wasn't it? Anthony, right, send job. us home, baby. Give good us job, some man. Give us some love. Tell us what the Yankees are going to do. Tell us that the Red Sox are going to crash and burn. Tell and, us about Cora. Yeah, okay. yeah so tell us about you know, Cora. So give us your no filter first right off, now. Take it off. How does how does a guy get accused of a cheating? It, for Houston Astros, that's a whole other subject. But how does one manager accuse of cheating? He just comes back after a little slap on the wrist, like, "Oh, you're not going to manage this year. You're fired." But coming back next year, and you're going to have a little bit of success when you come back. To me, that's bullshit. That is bullshit, and it's disrespectful to the game of baseball. I respect the Red Sox organization because they're making a bar move by getting Corey, because obviously he gets it going over there. But still, it's fucked up for the sport. Well, However, we're going to talk about the Yes Network, too, then, if we're going to talk no, about no, Cora. No, no, oh, we got to give Anthony oh, yeah. his time. Hold okay. on. Michael, Michael K. said, see you. Hold on. Speaking of Yes Network. Um, <laughs> oh, wow. No, I think the Yankees are really going to rebound. I think they're going to win some baseball games. They're definitely going to make the playoffs. Uh, I don't know if they're going to win the division. Rays are way ahead. The division's up for grabs at this point. You know, there's a lot of baseball to be played, but I have confidence this team's going to get to the playoffs. And if they can get to the playoffs and they can get healthy for the playoffs, the team can definitely contend for a World Series. But we all know matters with health, not talent, health. New York Yankees, 27 championships. Ooh, 27 championships. Thank you. All right. Well, guys, you know what? Like I said, we can let this go all night. We appreciate y'all giving us a little bit of time. And you Absolutely. know what? I, I'm hoping, you know, maybe come September, we might be able to do this again. Oh, yeah. That'd be good, man. Let's get them Rays out of here, dude. They don't even yeah, belong I, anywhere. Like, we both yeah. agreed that baseball yeah. is best when the Yankees and Red Sox are, the are, are vibing. Yeah. When, we, when, we when went they're off punching the air, each other in the face, that's absolutely. when baseball is at its best. Absolutely. I'll tell you what, we guys. Were talking. We yeah. might spice it up and find one of the dozen Rays fans out there and get them on with you. What, one of the – yeah, 12 fans. that One of the 12 fans over. they got yeah. across the country. Yeah, we'll get one on with you. Okay. They can't even sell that joint out when they're in the playoffs, man. They're fitting. <laughs> hey, man, the trop. That is a uh, the iconic. Trop. That's an iconic video. Yeah, iconic. There yeah, yeah. yeah. There's Dick Vitale in about <laughs> about twelve thousand other baby. seventy seventy eight year old retirees and Dick Vitale. It's Vital off the, the can't walk, baby. Oh, my yeah. <laughs> Uh, Dick Snell, mind. 78 pitches getting yanked, baby. Oh, uh, man, I wasn't even a Rays <laughs> fan, and I was upset about that. But, God, hey, gentlemen, y'all y'all been great. We appreciate Anthony, you. Good to meet you, man. Yeah, good to meet you, both. Appreciate I, you guys. All right, y'all be good. All right, guys. Be easy.